What are we doing today? Well, some minimal studies. Quick, easy studies to experiment with one particular thing. What does minimal mean? Seriously? Let us consult le dictionnaire. Minimal. Of a minimum amount, quantity, or degree. Negligible. You know, kind of like your brain. Yeah, so what we're going to do today is six or seven minimal studies. And I had one particular thing in mind that I wanted to try or practice or experiment with. And this is kind of my lesson to you today. You can devise these studies on your own. And for me, they always begin with a theme or a question, or it could be a brush or a color or a paper. But in this case, it's a technique or an idea of a technique, and I just want to explore it. Best way to do that is rather than a painting, a full painting, several quick minimal studies. Now we actually have done this before. I did several for patrons. If you look back, and I will link to this episode below, we did a line over wash, uh, actually did two paintings, and I have a full public episode on that. But then for patrons, I went and broke it down into several quick little studies where you could practice that same technique in very isolated and limited ways. Minimal. They're quick. They're fun. It's a much more productive way to explore, and that's what we're going to do today. So, let's go do it. Well, to begin with, I'm just going to paint amorphous shapes. Uh, really, I'm not thinking about these a whole lot. By the way, I'm using this oval washed Da Vinci Cosmotop, the number 14. I like the oval wash because uh, you can get a lot of variety in your stroke. Uh, and I don't have to switch brushes. And that's great for these little minimal studies. But uh, I, the theme I'm using here, or what I'm experimenting with, are just uh, interlocking wet and wet shapes. Now that may be pulling out a wash with some water, like basically touching a wet wash with some water and pulling out another wash, or dabbing in... Uh, one wash into another, sort of like a charge. Or painting, you're going to see me painting a lot of washes side by side and then just linking them up at very precise points. It's funny, but it, it really works to just kind of pick one little thing, a little theme that you want to try and and experiment with it to the max. You can see here, I'm just kind of touching the edges of these washes with nothing but water, mainly. And then what I like to do is come back in with a much less wet brush with some much denser pigment and just do little charge ends, just little touches. So a lot of the technique I'm experimenting with in these studies is just little touches here and there and then I'll paint like I'm doing some little detail here I'm just kind of drawing in some little detail things that might look like tree branches or underbrush or something and I mean basically I'm just I'm I'm waiting to see what watercolor does uh, and reacting to that you know, wet and wet washes uh, make up a lot of the arsenal of watercolors, but they don't have to be like big, completely wet uh, pieces of paper. And you can see here, I forgot to push record. It's not a big deal because I didn't like that one very much. And I pretty much did the same thing that I did in the first one. Don't worry, we got five more coming, and then uh, we'll be doing a detail pass over all of these. Now here you can see I'm painting a very faint wash. And see how I'm painting these next to each other. But not touching or barely touching. So that's kind of one of the things that kind of hit my brain. Is like what happens if they link up very small places. Or cross over. You see how it crossed over from one to another. The color. Or what happens, like what I'm doing here, where I'm drawing in the wet part and out into the dry part. 
and then back into the wet part. And now see here again, I'm just touching with some little charges of dense pigment with much less water and, and letting some, some vivid color, some heavy pigment sort of spread. So that's kind of what these little studies are about. They're just setting some parameters uh, so you can study what happens in one given situation. Right there, I'm, I was lifting, and now I'm back to doing some little um, intense pigment charge ends. These don't have to necessarily really look like something, some great grand landscape. Uh, obviously, you have landscape in my mind while I'm doing these. These little charge ends here, uh, some very dark pigment. Uh, it's always great to touch into the base of shapes since shadows tend to be at the base of things in watercolor. And I just like painting in some of these smaller detail shapes. Here we go again. A very amorphous shape. And if you want to try this, please do not think about these shapes too much. Don't think, overthink them. Um, just paint some amorphous random shapes. And here I'm going to get really close. And then in a minute, I'm going to touch and let them link up. And I'm just kind of doing some calligraphic drawing here a little bit just to have some detail out in the drier areas. See here where I'm linking up those washes. And that was my idea. Just little touches where wet washes interact with each other in very limited ways. And bleed. And then touching back in with uh, intense pigment. Maybe crossing over from one wash to another. And it really uh, did yield some interesting results and ideas and I want to do more of these just with the same parameters same ideas that I'm using here and by all means uh, if you do this keep it simple just keep it simple do a little bit of blue here. I don't even know what some of these colors are. I'm just reaching for things I see on the palette. Uh, I mean, if I took the time, I could I could know what they are, but I, I do so much painting visually. I know that that's cerulean blue uh, mixed in with a little Payne's gray. So here, uh, just another, maybe a little more complex, but amorphous wash. Now just dabbing in some of that deeper pigment in places. That's got some green in it and some Payne's gray. Just letting it bleed. See what happens. Going to charge in some red iron oxide and here again pulling from the wet part of the wash out into the dry part of the paper now i will come back uh with the detail passes i mentioned and sharpen up just a few places but initially you know just some little wet and wet shapes that just kind of happen automatically this particular one I'm working on now, I thought ended up being pretty interesting because it just worked. I mean, it worked with the minimal amount of brush strokes, and that was kind of partly what was in my brain, too. What can I do just with very minimal brush strokes and just kind of very limited touching here and there with pigment, water? This one I'm working on now I didn't like very much. 
I thought I would get a little more up close and detail with like some little twiggy branch things. You'll see it really didn't look that great. But same principle. See how I'm touching one wash into another, but only in places. That was my idea. And uh, back to the charging in some denser, more intense pigment in places. This is where I just started drawing what I don't even know what they <laughs> what they were. I don't think I had an idea, just little kind of stalks of something. But you know you don't have to like everyone. In fact, uh if you end up with one or two out of you know, maybe six or seven, uh, you're doing pretty good. One or two that you really like. This ended up looking like some weird plant at the bottom of the sea. Now this one I thought was turned out pretty cool. I wanted to do something at the bottom that was much more horizontal. So I started painting these shapes of sort of strata. Uh, kind of one layer above the other or below the other. And again, I'm touching the washes in particular places. Letting them bleed together. And leaving little white space separations in other places. Here comes the charge ends at the base of some of these shapes. With a lot darker and more intense pigment. Just keep in mind, if you do that, you need a lot more paint and a lot less water. If you come back with just another wash of color, uh, everything's just going to meld together and give you one color. So when you add these, these deep, Intense pops of uh, pigment, they have to be mostly paint with little water or a lot less water. And here we're doing the crossover thing again. It's maybe a little distant tree line, crossing it from one strata or wash into another. And I really like the way that turned out. And these little experiments, you know, especially when you do them quick and experiment with it in a number of ways and you can do several, uh, you, they stick to your brain. I mean, the ideas stick in your brain. Now, this is what I'm going to use for the detail pass. This is the Lebensen uh, Itty Bitty Elk Brush, and it is a fantastic detailer. And I'm not going to do much. I'm just going to sharpen or crisp up a few little areas. Maybe focus in on one little spot and leave the rest washy. Focus in on a spot that has some detail already. And everything is dry, by the way. All of the uh, ones I did before are now dry. So there's no more wet and wet. I'm adding a little more contrast. A little more dark. Or intense pigment. I mean, and I'm fine just leaving some of these to look very abstract, but I, this is also part of the experiment. I just want to see what some some drawing uh, with a brush does on top of these. And it's very similar to what we did with the ink overwash, but it's with paint. Trying to 
do something to that one. That one over there on the right. This one, I think, was one of my favorites because it was so simple. It was so poetically simple, and it just came out kind of cool. And I like the bottom one, too. I think the that greenish one on the left and that bottom one were my two favorites. And that's what I was after, this sort of interesting simplicity that just seemed to emerge with, with an economy of brushstroke. Yeah, so um, figure out some of these uh, studies you can do on your own. Take a look at all of them here. Give yourself some parameters to follow and experiment. See what you can learn. See what watercolor can teach you and what watercolor can show you. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.